What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another first 12 figure focus for Han Solo. We're going to talk about some of the different Han Solo variations that are out there in terms of the sculpts, in terms of the country of origin and where they were manufactured. And I'm also going to show you a few bootlegs, uh, Polish bootlegs, that are not only in my collection, but we're going to reference some photos from Jacob Brzezinski's Polish bootleg Star Wars book. So let's dig right in. We're going to we're going to talk about kind of price data first and then we're going to cut to my collection. I don't have a big collection of Han Solo figures, but I got a couple of Polish bootlegs as well as a couple of Spanish figures. So we'll take a look at that after we look at prices. But uh, first, let's dig into kind of ungraded standard Hong Kong Han Solos. Obviously, you probably know at this point there are two different head variations. We have the large head or the big head. Uh, which is this one here. This is a pretty nice, clean example of one. And there's also a smaller head. Uh, the, the big head tends to go for a little bit less, probably because they're manufactured in larger quantities. Uh, but this is a pretty clean example with some pretty heavy eyebrows there. Somebody needs to break out the pruning shears that you use for your bushes out front because this guy has some pretty bushy eyebrows. This one sold for $37 plus $5 shipping. So pretty good deal there. Pretty good deal for a Han Solo big head. And the small head uh, it looks like this. Obviously, he looks nothing like Harrison Ford. But uh, these do tend to command a little bit higher prices. This one is probably 75 or 80, 80, maybe 80, but probably more like a 75 grade, just given the discoloration on the white portion of the figure. Yet that still sold for $71. $71 plus another $5 shipping. So gives you a couple of rough data points for loose, ungraded Han Solos. Um, and they go up from there. Uh, here is an example of the PBP figure made in Spain. There are a couple of different variations for this figure, and then I've got the POC and the Spanish POC and the, and the PBP figure graded that we'll go over at the end of this video. But, um, you know, there's like a, a, a more heavy scar version, and then there's more like the bump, like this one. This is the, what I have in my collection, where it's kind of a, a, a faint bump on the back of the leg there. Uh, with the GMFGI. That one sold for $65. $65. Loose, incomplete, but in pretty good shape. And then I've got a few of the graded examples here. This is the PBP figure with pale hands. There are, you know, as I mentioned, the, the Spanish figures had a, a number of different variations, but this later Spanish figure came with either pink hands, like my example that I'll show you later, or the pale hands. The pale hands considered a little bit more desirable, in my opinion, versus the standard pink hands like I have. But uh, this is uh, labeled Kenner PBP, which again, I don't know why they do that. It really should just say PBP. But this is the Han Solo pale hands archival case. It was graded 75 plus. It was listed for $499.99 plus $10 shipping. The actual sales price, which was the best offer accepted, was $375. 375 for that PBP figure. That's a little high. That's a little high. I think you can get that for a lot better deal if, you, if you're patient in an auction. It might have to be a UKG graded example. Most of the Spanish figures are not graded by AFA. They just don't, they just don't get a lot of them graded. If you want a loose graded Spanish figure, it's probably going to be a UKG graded example just because most of the people that have them are over in Europe, right? Either in Spain or UK or wherever. And they send those to UKG just because they're closer geographically. So most likely you're not going to see a ton of these graded by AFA or CAS, but, uh, but that gives you an example of one that is graded by AFA. Now, this has got the Hong Kong date stamp, as you can see on the label, where it says HK. And this is AFA 85, a very high grade. Now, when it says Kenner slash PBP, this is really a POC, a Spanish POC figure. And for those of you who have not watched some of my other Spanish videos, the, the Spanish POCs were manufactured prior to the POC factory merging with PBP. So they imported Hong Kong parts. And that's why it has the Hong Kong date stamp on the back of the figure. And this has the very pale hands with the pale chest. This is a very, very difficult figure to get in high grade like this. This was AFA 85, and mine does not. Mine's like a 70 plus or something like that from CAS. But this this is a very, very expensive figure and very rare. And uh, it was listed for $1,000. The best offer accepted was 775 
I think that's a pretty good deal, actually. Um, I, you know, it's just very, very difficult to find these in high grade. Extremely difficult. And uh, I, I, me personally, I'd pay that all day long. I mean, I think for my ungraded example that ended up getting a 70 or 70 plus, I don't remember. We'll see in a little bit. Uh, I paid close to $300 for mine. So maybe mine was an overpay. I don't know. But $775 for an AFA 85 Spanish POC figure, early Spanish figure. That's a pretty good deal in my opinion. I, I would have paid that myself. Um, okay, now let's go back to kind of standard license figures that are non-Spanish. This is a no COO archival case, as you can see on the label there. Now, a no COO would be like a Palatoy. These, these would probably be in like Palatoy Trilogos or maybe even just straight Palatoy Return of the Jedi card backs. I don't know. Uh, or Empire Strikes Back. Who knows? It could be even on 12-back Palatoys. This one sold for $150 for a 75-grade no COO large head. So that gives you another data point there. Uh, this is an, another no COO. Again, it could have probably most likely in Palatoy card backs or Trilogos. Uh, this was an AFA 80. That one sold for $141 plus $10 shipping. So this one was $150 free shipping. This was about $152. And it was an AFA 80. So that's a pretty good deal there, given that it's a little higher grade. Uh, here was an AFA 80. This was a Hong Kong. Most of your Hans in the market are going to be Hong Kongs. That's just the way it is. It's going to be Hong Kong, large head or small heads. That one sold for $148 plus $4 shipping. That's a pretty good deal there. That's a pretty good deal. Now we're going to start digging into a little bit higher grades, and the prices reflect that. This was a large head Hong Kong AFA 85. That one sold for $305 on 77 bids, so a lot of action on that one. And then this is an 85 plus small head. You know, this would probably be your most desirable because these were produced in the fewest numbers. This is also the molded legs version, the molded legs AFA 85 plus. That so instead of painted black legs, this was molded in black plastic. So this is a pretty a pretty desirable figure here. That's and that sold for four hundred and twenty eight dollars plus eleven dollars shipping. So that, that's a pretty high number, but it is an eighty five plus, and it's also a molded legs uh, small head. Um, now here is a small head. Molded Legs, Hong Kong, AFA 90. Now, this is admittedly an older case. You know, this is an older case, so not, not as desirable, in my opinion. I'd rather have the 85 plus Molded Legs, Hong Kong, uh, with the newer case versus the 90 with the older case. Just because, I, you know, who knows? These, these figures in these older cases, older AFA cases, these are the very, very early AFA cases, and the figures slide around in those. There's no pegs to hold them in, and... Uh, you know, the, the figure can get scratching on the inside of the case just from jostling around inside these older cases. That was listed for $1,100, and it sold for $900, $900 versus the 85 plus that sold for $428. Exact same figure, Hong Kong small head molded legs. But to go from an 85 to a 90, you went from $438, $39 after shipping to $900 plus another $30 shipping, so $930. So in my opinion, this is an overpay. I wouldn't have paid this at all for, for Now, if this was in a newer case, you know, and it's an AFA 90, you know, maybe we're talking, you know, somewhere in there, but at $900 just seems like an overpay for, for what, what that is. Um, we just covered this one in a recent market update for the Kenage, or for the vintage uh, Kenner and, and other kind of figures. And this is the Brazilian Glass Leet. This was an AFA 80. Really gorgeous example. Again, the, the glass leet or glass light Brazilian Han Solo comes with a Jawa blaster, as you can see there. But and here's the label on this one: glass light. These are, these were made in 1988. AFA 80. It's just a really really difficult figure to find. That one sold again for 873 dollars. Now, when I compare that versus the AFA 90 in an older case with a standard Hong Kong that sold for more, I would have taken this all day long. This is a much better investment in my opinion. Much more. Difficult figure to find in high grade. So that was a good buy. Um, a few mint on card data points. Um, I just picked a random smattering based on some recent sales over the last two or three months. And then we'll dig into some of the ones in my collection, including the bootlegs. Uh, but this is a 12-back B AFA 75 plus Han Solo small head. Now keep in mind, this has frosting, as you can see, on the figurehead. Right in here, you can see how there's like a, a frosting. What that is, is that's basically mold. That's mold that has grown inside the blister on the head. And I've talked to several collectors that said if you put this under UV light for 15 or 20 minutes, 
that kills that mold that shows up on the head. I've talked to some collectors that say it has never come back. I've talked to other collectors that said it came back within a few months. So it just depends on what type of mold, I guess. Who knows? But uh, just give you a heads up there um, that, you know, you got to be careful. Because, you know, this was listed as a figure score of 80 on the subscore. I don't think that holds up. I don't think that holds up when you got, you know, mold growing on the head. That's probably more like a 70 or 75 in my opinion now. Probably 75. But anyway, that didn't stop the bidding. That still sold for $2,282. This was a 12-back B again. So one of the early early card backs. It was punched with a little bit of price sticker residue on there, but that's a pretty nice item. Uh, here was another gorgeous example. This is a 20-back H, and this was an AFA 70. As you can see there, small circle extension. And what that's referring to is on the back of the card. Uh, they had these free Boba Fett action figure card backs there's a number of different 20 backs a through like i i think or it might even be more than that but there's the circle extension is, is referring to this sticker right here where it says offer extended um so that's that red sticker that it's referring to on the afa label where it says small circle extension and there's rectangular ones there's circular ones all kinds of different sticker extensions but this was a 20 back h afa 70 that sold it was listed for 2200 dollars and uh, the, the actual sales price was $1,550. I looked that up on, on 130point.com. But uh, that's a really nice example there. You know, it's, it's only a 70, but it's still, you know, anything kind of early 12-back or 20-back Han Solo has just really skyrocketed, just like everything else. I think this was a great deal here. This one was listed as an AFA-80 yellowed blister 45-back. So this is the Star Wars display arena. It was punched. It did have, again, very light yellowing on the card, or excuse me, on the blister. But uh, very, very nice high-grade example. That one sold for $686 on January 25th. I think that's a pretty good deal right there. Um, it was yellowed a little bit, but that's that's a beautiful example of an ESB Han Solo with that Star Wars Display Arena offer on the 45 back. Obviously, for the Return of the Jedi version of Han Solo, there's an alternate card back, as you see here. This is the alternate card with Han holding the weapon and, uh, you know, the the Imperial Stormtrooper Blaster, I believe that is. That's an AFA 75, 65 back C with the Emperor offer. That one sold for $800 plus another $60 shipping. Um, so that's, a, that's, that's the alternate card back photo. And then the regular photo is this one. This is the Han Solo with... Uh, the 65A back, that one was an AFA 80, and that one was listed at auction. We covered this in a recent market update that sold on January 25th for $1,025, 33 bids, plus another $15 shipping. Clear blister, really, really nice example there. So that gives you a couple of data points for the Return of the Jedi card back, both the regular as well as the alternate picture. Now let's dig in to some of the graded bootlegs in my collection for Han Solo, as well as the two Spanish figures, so you can get a closer look at those. Okay, before we wrapped up this video, I thought it would make sense to show you some of the Han Solos in my collection. I've got a very modest Han Solo collection. I only have these four. I don't have any mint on cards or anything. But the four that I do have are pretty nice. And, and so let's go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, the first one is this one. This is the Spanish Puck version of Han Solo. And as we talked about, these used imported Hong Kong parts, but they were assembled and painted in Spain. And so here he is. This is known as the pale hands, pale chest. And you can see how pale that chest is, especially relative to the head. So this is a very, very desirable and, and tough to find. You know, we, we just documented that one that was an AFA 85 that sold for $775, and you know, really, that's a pretty good deal because I paid ungraded for this one a pretty substantial amount of money. Uh, but this is the correct early Hong Kong molded DL44 blaster. And you know, uh, Collector Archive Services, to their credit, they worked with me on this label. You know, I said, look, it's not it's not supposed to be POC slash PBP. It's supposed to be just POC. Because these figures were made in Spain prior to their merger with PBP. And so I had them label it POC Star Wars instead of POC slash PBP as they usually do. Now even POC slash PBP I'm okay with, right? That's how they label it most of the time unless you specifically request it to say PBP or POC by itself. Uh, but that's still better than what AFA does. AFA says Kenner slash PBP, which is ridiculous. 
I could sort of understand it with Pox, okay, because they're using Kenner imported Hong Kong parts, right? And so correctly, this says Hong Kong, pale hands and chest, and this is a 70 plus again. You know, so I could see them doing that Puck slash Kenner because it's it's using Kenner imported parts. But for PBP, there's absolutely no reason to put Kenner slash PBP on theirs. And I have no idea why AFA does that. So now, let's go over to the PBP figure. Again, very dusty here. Uh, this is the PBP graded by UKG. And UKG does it right. They know how to label these things because they deal the most with the Spanish figures. So Han Solo, PBP... No CO bump. And it's nice that they say bump because there are several different PBP variations with like a light scar and things like that. But this this lighting will hopefully show that light bump that you can see right there on the leg. You, just, you can kind of see it highlighted here. So this used, um, you know, they, they reused the molds from Hong Kong and scratched out or filled in where it used to say Hong Kong. And now on this one, there's like a light bump. Some of the Spanish PBP figures have a scar where they just scarred out and scraped out the Hong Kong label on there. This one, they just filled it in with putty or something, and, and, and it's a lot more uniform looking than uh, some of the other Spanish PBP figures where it's a very rough scar. But you can see here, this is a little bit different than the AFA graded example that we just talked about. That AFA graded PBP figure had very pale hands and a much lighter chest. This this has almost pink hands. This is much more pink in color. And if you compare that pink uh, PBP hands versus the very, very pale POC figure, this does a really great job of showing you the pale hands and chest on the Spanish POC versus the this is the pink version of the Spanish PBP. But there is a, there is also a pale painted PBP version uh, that's, that's a little bit closer in color to this Spanish POC. So hopefully I'm not making you confused there. But th those are just two different Spanish figures, the early POC and then the PBP that came later after their merger with the POC factory. Now we're going to round it out with my po my Polish bootlegs. This is the first one I got very early on. This I call this one the Pigpin variant because he looks like Pigpin from Charlie Brown with all the dirt and uh, so forth on him. But this is a very low-grade, 60, unarticulated, 1980s Polish bootleg static with no... Uh, you know, no articulation. And I'm going to show you this one in a second, but first I thought we'd pull out Jacob Przinsky's Volume 2. This is the second generation or Volume 2 of his Guide to Unlicensed Vintage Polish Star Wars figures. And as it specifically re relates to Han Solo, I wanted to point out a couple of interesting things. First, in this volume, he added some really cool photos of the first set figures. These are articulated first set figures and extremely rare, extremely expensive. So uh, these were uh, baggies that were discovered or, you know, he found a collector. I don't I, th I think it was a, another collector that had these and allowed him to photograph these. Don't quote me on that. But there were four different figures. I think there's actually five different figures in the first set. You had an Obi-Wan, a Leia, a Tusken Raider, Han Solo, and then there was also a Chewbacca. And that, you know, he labels those as the original set. And here is the example of the Han Solo. Again, these are articulated. They're fully articulated. Very early figures. Uh, there, this is extremely rare. There's only about 13 of these that exist left today. So these are the early, early articulated, very original set, original Polish bootlegs. So th these came out originally. Now, these are the static, unarticulated first set that came out. And as you see here, even in this book, he's got my example here that I'm going to show you in my collection. And it's it's a dead giveaway because it's got black fingertips on them from a mispaint, misapplied paint. But there are a number of different colors for that static bootleg. I just showed you one, my pig pin variation. These are the cooler color variations. And there are a number of different awesome and disco colors for Han. That pink one is really cool. You got a green one there. Now this gray one is right here, and I've got that one. I, this is the one I bought from Jacob, and I had Collector Archive, with Jacob Przinsky's help, the author's help, uh, print out a, a, a copy of the page. Now this page is from the first book, you know, since the, this volume, the second volume is what I just showed you, but uh, I got a, a small kind of miniature version of the page from the book, and then here is the, that, that figure that was featured in both the volume one as well as volume two. And here's the label on it. It's first generation Han Solo unarticulated bootleg 
Book Photo Sample, graded 70. So it's really cool. I think that's a really low grade, by the way, CAS. Thanks a lot. But it's, this is this is not a 70. This is more like a 75, in my opinion. But anyway, this this is what it got. And it's a, it's a great figure. It's really cool to have another book photo sample for, especially for a bootleg. You know, it's just kind of one of those pieces of history that um, really presents nicely. And it was nice of Jacob to not only sell me the figure, but he sent me like a, you know, a file with this page so we could kind of get it printed out and encased it with um, with a label noting that this was a book photo sample. So very cool to have a, a second boot, you know, book photo sample. As you guys remember from my Holy Grail discussion, I've got a book photo sample toxic Spanish Bosque to go along with this one. So those are the two kind of big photo samples in my collection. Uh, but anyway, those are kind of just gives you a rough idea of what's out there. There is also a Hungarian bootleg Han Solo. He's not particularly difficult to find. He is difficult to find complete with his blaster. It's kind of a Bespin style blaster. But, uh, you know, uh, just the figure alone can go for a couple hundred bucks. 150 to $200 should, should be able to nail you down one of those. They are very, very fragile, though, so be careful, um, you know, how you sh get it shipped to you from the seller. Because, um, you know, make sure you request a box because they, they are extremely, extremely fragile, especially around the thumbs. That's all I really had for this video. I hope you enjoyed looking at not only licensed figures uh, from Kenner, but also some of the other foreign examples that are out there, as well as the bootlegs that are out there from Poland, as well as Hungary. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.